This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the third lecture on inventory control, which is chapter six of the free uh, lecture notes in paper F2. Uh, and in this one, uh, I want to explain what we mean by the economic batch quantity, which is um, section seven uh, of the chapter. In the previous two lectures, we were looking at the economic order quantity. At the very beginning, I explained that if we had so economic order quantity here, if I told you that, for example, we were ordering 5,000 units each time, I told you I drew a little graph. And I said that what's going to happen uh, if we have the units over time? I said we'd start the year with 5,000 units in inventory. Uh, um, those would last as a period. Gradually, we'd use them up and the inventory would fall to zero. Then we get in another 5,000 from the supplier, they fall to zero, and so on. Oops, it's supposed to be a straight line. Uh, but it'd keep going between 5,000 and zero, and the average inventory would be 2,500. And although proving the EOQ formula isn't in the syllabus, part of the proof does always assume that the average inventory would be half of the order quantity. But that's what we're ordering from a supplier. You know, we're ordering 5,000 perhaps every month, and every month exactly 5,000 suddenly arrive. But economic batch quantity, same sort of idea, except we're ordering from our factory. You know, maybe we have a factory where we actually produce the goods and they send them to the shop and that's where we sell them. And the reason things will be slightly different there, so economic batch quantity, that maybe we're ordering from the factory 5,000 each time, but the factory can't produce them just like that. You know, it takes them a few days to make them. The shop, uh, sorry, or economic order quantity, order from a supplier, and they've got inventories themselves. And if we order 5,000, 5,000 suddenly appear all at once. But if we're ordering from our own factory, I might order 5,000 from the factory today, but maybe it'll take two or three days for them to actually make them all. But they're supplying them to us as they're making them. So I will get 5,000, but I'll get them over maybe two or three days. And so what's going to happen is this. Maybe on day one I order 5,000. But again, they take a few days to arrive. But during those few days, they're coming in to me, but I am supplying some to the customers. Uh, remember, customers, you know, if they get the 5,000 from my supplier, customers are buying until the level keeps going down. And so in the two or three days it takes the factory to supply them, customers have been buying. And so it never actually hits 5,000. They're sending me 5,000, but if during those few days customers have bought 100, it means that the maximum level only becomes 4.9. I'm inventing figures, obviously. And the customers carry on buying, so again it goes down to zero. Then I order another batch from the factory, but it takes a few days to come in. And while they're coming in, again, customers are still buying. So the maximum inventory ends up being slightly lower. And of course, if the maximum inventory is slightly lower, so too is the average. So that's what's causing us the problem. And as a result, the formula changes a little bit. Um, you're given it again on the formula sheet, so no worries. But I've printed it uh, in the notes as well. But the economic batch quantity, which is when we're making our own goods, 
It's very similar. Uh, the square root of 2 C naught D uh, over C H. But that, that's the same as before, but then this extra little bit. Uh, 1 minus D over R. Which I'll explain the symbols in a minute, but <coughs> that extra little bit <coughs> is in fact to account for the fact that the average inventory is a little bit lower because of that delay in receiving goods. Uh, to explain what the symbols mean and how we apply it, look at example four. A company has demand for 50,000 units per year. We produce our own units at a cost of $30 a unit and are capable of producing at the rate of 500,000 a year. Now that's telling us how fast they can produce. They're not going to produce 500,000 units. We only need 50,000. You know, they're producing lots of other things as well. Um, we only need 50,000. They're capable of producing at the rate of 500,000 a year. Again, that's telling us how fast they're able to make them. You know, is it going to take a day for them to make a batch? Is it going to take them a week to make a batch? Now, the machine setup costs are 200 for each batch. Well, that means, you see, our factory is pre presumably producing lots of different goods. We are just looking at one of them. But every time we want them to produce a batch of this product, the machine settings need changing. We need to set up the machines. And then when they produce a different product, we'll set up the machines again. But every time they have to set up to produce us a batch, it costs us 200. Uh, the holding costs, normal business, 10% of inventory value. Well, the symbols D is the total demand. That's normal here, 50,000 units a year. C0, well, our CO, it was the order cost before. Here, it's not really costs of ordering from our own factory, uh, but it's equivalent is the cost of setting up the machines each time. Which here, it's 200 every time we place an order. Uh, CH is the holding cost, as normal. Here it's 10% of inventory value. The cost of the units, $30 each. So the holding cost, $3 per unit per year. And finally, the new symbol, R. R is the rate at which they can produce. I say again, they only produce what we want, which is here 50,000. But how fast can they produce? How many are they capable of making per year, the rate of production per year? Here it tells us they're capable of producing at the rate of 500,000 per year. And so, again, it's simply a question of being able to use your calculator. The economic batch quantity, the square root of 2, uh, CO is 200, uh, D, 50,000, divided by CH, which is 3, times, well, I'll work it out separately, 1 minus D, which is 50,000, over R, which is 500,000, which is 1 minus 50 over 500 is 0.1. It's 0.9. So check your happy there. 1 minus D over R, again, 0.9. And so let's do it. 2 times 200 times 50,000 divided by 3 divided by 0.9 square root, I get 2722.
it doesn't go exactly so round it to the nearest unit. But there's how many we'll order from the factory each time. Uh, the question says, calculate the economic batch quantity. Well, there we are. And if this is asked, that's probably all that will be required. To be safe, though, it said, what will the costs involved be at that quantity? Well, almost like before, but one little bit that just could be worth remembering. Before, what did we have? We had the reorder cost and the holding cost. Well, the reorder cost, the equivalent is the setup costs. And if we're ordering 2722 two each time, how many orders will we need to place? Well, 50,000. 2722 two each time gives us 18.37 orders a year. And I did say in one of the earlier lectures, don't round that. Some, uh, some years there'll be 19 orders, some years 18 orders, but on average 18.37 a year. Uh, and the cost of ordering, or the cost of setting up here, was 200 for each batch. So over a year, the setup costs 18.37 times 200 is 3674. The other one where as I say, if you want to be safe, you have something to learn, is the holding cost. Because this is the bit that changes slightly. Um, in economic order quantity, we took the average inventory times the cost per unit, and the average inventory was always half the order quantity. However, as I explained at the beginning of this lecture, because there's that delay in the goods arriving, the average inventory, in fact, isn't half the order quantity. Uh, I've printed the formula for it uh, just above the example. It's the order quantity, 2722 over 2. So I've got this line in the way, 2722 over 2. But to adjust for this delay, we multiply by 1 minus d over r, and that was it, 1 minus d over r, 0.9. So the average inventory, 2722, divided by 2 times 0.9, I get 12.24.9. Uh, and the um, holding cost per unit, remember it was 10% of the inventory value of 30, so it was $3. And so the um, holding cost, 1224.9 times 3, is 3675. The total, therefore, Seven three four nine. Uh, so two things there. Obviously, make sure you can use the economic batch quantity formula. Although it's even though it's on the formula sheet, it's very rarely asked. But make sure to be safe. And although I don't think you'd be asked the costings uh, to be safe, just remember uh, the average inventory that it's the um, batch quantity over two but it's times 1 minus d over r, which here came to 0.9. Good. All right, we'll leave this lecture here with one more lecture on this chapter, which is actually looking at something rather different. Uh, but I'll explain that in the next lecture.